let's dig in. Last summer, I shared about the six types of summer on the podcast. I decided to resurface this topic because I think it's quite relevant, especially now that we're into summer again. Every year is a little different. I was just talking to a client who shared with me that summer typically gives her the opportunity to rest and recuperate. This year, this hasn't been the case. We can carry a lot of expectations into each season based on what we experienced last year or in years past, but try as you might, there's no way to carbon copy the experience you had in years past and paste them into your current experiences. Even if you did, how you go through it now would vary and could even prove disappointing. As I look back, I can clearly see that last summer I was experiencing a summer of recreation, restlessness, and restoration. As I mentioned in the original episode, the different types of summer can interweave and overlap. So for me, three different types of summer were playing out. I'll share a little bit about each here. 1. Recreation Between late 2014 and summer 2016, my life was organized chaos. There was no time or room for a social life or entertainment. I would just binge watch Netflix in my spare time because I had no energy for anything else. In 2017, I made a new friend that paved the way for a lot of activity during the summer. Eating out, canoeing, hiking, getting out in nature, shopping, and more. 2. Restlessness Last summer, I was waking up to a new self, or maybe I was peeling back the layers as I shared in episode 70 of the podcast. I felt like a spiritual spotlight was on me, and it was incredibly uncomfortable. I found a fascinating article about restlessness, or neurasthenia, on the art of manliness. I'm going to quote a section from it here because I believe it serves as a relatively accurate description of what I was experiencing. It's the gap between our expectations about the world and how we really experience it that causes our modern neurasthenia. New media and technology has seemingly brought the whole world just within our reach, but we can never seem to grasp it. We want to magically take it all in, and we can't, and so we feel depressed and anxious. We are sure that unlike us, others have found a way to lay hold of all the good stuff out there. We have this feeling that somewhere beyond our life, Real life is taking place. It feels as if there are so many possibilities and choices out there, so many that we're absolutely overwhelmed by them. We don't know where to start, where to dive in. We're thus paralyzed and don't do anything. And then we feel shiftless and restless because we feel bad that we're not doing stuff because there's so much we should be experiencing. But then we feel overwhelmed again and then, well, you get the idea. Three, restoration. Making a new friend and getting outside and enjoying the weather proved especially beneficial for my healing process. As I mentioned in the original episode, healing doesn't always feel good when it's taking place, and it didn't. But I felt like a lot of what was lost in my youth was restored last summer. With that said, this year is considerably different. As I've already shared, every year is different. I'll share more about that at the end of this episode. But first, I'm going to play the audio from the original podcast episode. Even if you've already listened to it, have another listen. And as you're listening, take some time to reflect. Consider what type of summer you experienced last year and what type of summer you're experiencing this year. Thanks for joining me. Normally on the podcast, I would be sharing some insights about marketing, social media, or possibly business and entrepreneurship. But today I wanted to take a break from that to talk about a different matter entirely. And I actually debated whether this was something I should even bring up. But just the other day, I took some time out to go for a walk in Camor. It's a rather picturesque town nestled in the Rockies, only about an hour, hour and a half away from where I live in Calgary. It's a beautiful town, and it's also a bit of a tourist destination. But the thing that occurred to me, and I've had a lot of conversations with some entrepreneurs and artists I know, They seem to be experiencing this summer in a rather disruptive way. There are some exceptions, of course, and I've also talked to some people that really seem to be loving it and in their element, which is great. But as artists, we will go through different seasons. And this is also the type of content that I've been creating for my upcoming book, Flashes of Elation. So even if I just spend one episode talking about this, I believe it's something that 
could be of value to you. So we will get back to the regularly scheduled program in the next few episodes. But for this one, I wanted to talk about the six types of summer and how to interpret them. How we look at events shapes our lives. That's how significant this whole issue of interpretation is to me. And I think you will also find that you can view life's events through different lenses. And sometimes that can come through experience and time and some of the healing that you'll experience along the way. So I believe there have been a lot of shifts, certainly on a global scale with some of the things that are happening in politics and across the world. And of course, on a more localized personal level, as I see reflected through some of the people that I know personally, these sudden and disruptive shifts can affect you and your ability to move forward in your career or finish the tasks you need to complete or take your relationships to the next level or really just slow down and enjoy life. There is a rhythm to life from week to week and also from season to season. I have often ignored it, especially in the last six years or so, because I've been pursuing various ventures and endeavors as an entrepreneur and as a musician, but sometimes the universe will get your attention through any means necessary. It wakes you up and you suddenly realize, that's right, I have a heart. I don't just have a mind. I also have a heart that wants things. And in fact, it might be a truer reflection of who I am on the inside. So often we judge the heart and try to push it down and forget about it. And then we wake up days later or weeks later or months or years later to realize we have unfulfilled desires. So as I was going on a walk in Camor and reflecting on my past experiences, I basically identified six types of summer that exist. And there could be others too, and I would love to hear your thoughts on that. But I've used words that start with the letter R to maintain uniformity. So all of the following types of summers begin with the letter R. The first type of summer is the summer of relief. This is really one of my favorites. You get to breathe and spread your wings and maybe even take a break. It may even feel like an oasis in the middle of the desert based on all the hardships that you've experienced earlier in the year or some of the assignments that you've had to plow through or whatever difficulties you've been experiencing in life. There really isn't a whole lot to interpret with regards to the summer of relief. Chances are you've been in touch with your heart and been following with the seasons for a while. The second type of summer that I've encountered is one of recreation. This is where you get to go out, have fun, maybe go to the lake and go boating or fishing or swimming. There's a lot of activity, not necessarily one or after the another, but there's enough to keep you engaged and interested. And you get to do things you don't usually get to do. Maybe you'll pick up a good book and read, do some journaling, meet new people, share new experiences with your friends and family members. The summer of recreation is really great because you get to recreate yourself. You get to recreate your energy. The third type of summer is the summer of restoration. You get to heal from old wounds and possibly even purge old beliefs. But the main thing to remember here is that healing can be painful. Anybody who's been through rehab will probably tell you that even though the moment of injury was the most traumatic and painful, the months or possibly even years spent recovering were just as difficult in some ways. But if you're going through a summer of restoration, overall, it can be a great thing because you get to reclaim things from your past that you've lost, which might even be a piece of yourself. The fourth type of summer is the summer of restlessness, which is the most painful to talk about and really my least favorite. You have those feelings of not being sure about your life or what to even do with yourself and you're watching the clock as it ticks by the seconds wondering when this minute will be over. You don't know what to do or where to go and even when you are out doing things that are supposed to be fun, you're still not fully satisfied in that moment. There are a lot of categories to think about in terms of uncertainty and uncertainty is really at the root of the rest restlessness you're experiencing. It could be because of relationships, projects that you haven't finished, income or debt or a job or even a career. 
I think a major category, and I'm seeing this a lot right now, is summer love, infatuation, love sickness, unrequited love. I even put together a video about that, so I'll make sure to include that in the show notes. Here's the thing. If you're experiencing restlessness right now, there's a good chance you've been disconnected from the rhythm of life as well as your heart. You've killed your desires in favor of perhaps pursuing a career or some kind of project that's meant to be fulfilling. It's a wake up call. Basically, it's just letting you know that, hey, you're still alive. You still have a heart and the heart matters. The fifth type of summer is the summer of relocation, which can be a great thing, but can also be immensely uncomfortable. You probably have some kind of itinerary or schedule for your summer. You know where you're going to be and it's all mapped out, almost like a band that's on tour. Relocation almost always means moving from one familiar place to a less comfortable one. Whether that's physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, or even financial, I think it's helpful to remember that this is all part of your growth process. It could even be argued that everything you encounter in life offers a growth experience. When you relocate, everything is new and fresh and different. And the new experiences that come into your life may be uncomfortable for a while, but you'll learn to accept and live with them. The sixth and final type of summer I've identified as part of being my experience is the summer of realization. Again, realization isn't necessarily a bad thing. You may be waking up to certain realities you hadn't really considered before. It could be that you haven't accomplished what you thought you would have accomplished by now. It could be that you come to the realization you only have so many years to live and you want to begin allocating your time differently than you have to this point. Sometimes this can all manifest as a rude awakening, which certainly makes your summer uncomfortable. It's only natural that with the passage of time, you're going to begin reflecting on past experiences and thinking about where you've come and how you got there. And we all do that at different times of the year. I feel like New Year's is often the best time to do that, but summer can also offer that opportunity for us to think about and reflect on what's happened. I think it's all just part of the natural rhythm of the seasons. So at this point, you've probably identified what summer you've been experiencing so far. And you've probably also thought about the six different types of summer and which one you would rather be experiencing than the one you are right now. Maybe not so much if you're experiencing summer of relief recreation or restoration, but the less comfortable ones are often restlessness, relocation, and realization. But I do have some good news for you if you are going through the summer of restlessness, relocation, or realization. And that is simply this, the different types of summer can overlap. So even though you might be going through a bit of a rude awakening at this very moment, on the other side could be relief or restoration or recreation. Earlier in life, it seems like summers seem to carry a single theme, but as you advance in years, there's just way more overlap and intersection than there perhaps was in the past. But whatever you may be going through right this moment, I just want to remind you that the summer is a very special time of year and you can ignore it, you can loathe or hate it, you can dismiss it, but I believe it's wise to acknowledge and go with the rhythm of life. You will only experience so many summers in your lifetime. And if you happen to be living in a more temperate climate, you may not be able to appreciate this quite on the level that I do here in Canada where the winters can be quite brutal. But summer can be a very special season for all of us. So I just wanted to remind you to take some time to enjoy it. And no matter what you might be going through right now, don't worry, there's probably something waiting for you on the other side. And I'm back to wrap up this episode. I can only speculate as to what kind of summer I'm experiencing this year, but I can tell you it's already considerably different from last year. Last year, it felt like time expanded. Two months felt more like a year. It was painful, excruciating even. This year, time appears to be progressing at an ordinary pace. So far, summer 2018 has brought both relief and recreation. I'm far more stable on a personal level than I was last year. I'm happier and more fulfilled too. I think it's possible that my summer will carry on exactly in the same manner. I'm not going through major healing, at least not on an emotional level. I'm not restless, I'm not relocating or moving around a lot, and I'm not coming to any major realizations. More than anything, I'm excited about how things are progressing and what I get to do next. 
I recognize that this is a different kind of episode, but I hope you got something up from it. And I hope you're prospering and making headway in your career as a musician or a music entrepreneur, whether you're playing at rodeos and festivals or helping organize them, whether you're being a steady eddy with your business or taking a little break, whether you're finding fresh opportunities to explore or just getting started in your career. I hope you're enjoying a productive and fulfilling summer. If you have any thoughts, I look forward to seeing your comments in the show notes. Thanks for listening. Make sure to go to musicentrepreneurhq.com for show notes and other goodies. And leave us a review in iTunes to help us spread the word. 